Hi, leave a message. You have nine new messages. First new message. Hey, Anne, it's Ida. Um, could your voicemail message somehow get shorter? I mean, I know it's your cell phone, but it's kind of jarring. Anyway, just wanted to check in, say hi, see if the painting has done anything yet. It is Friday night, and I'll be up for a while, so call me back. Nice voicemail. What? Are you getting a ton of those driver's license spam calls? Anyway, you know who this is. Call me back. Hey, Anne. It's Ida again. Just checking in. It's Saturday morning at... Oh, oh sorry. I didn't realize it was so early. Um, so call me back whenever you wake up. Hi, Professor Di. It's Kettle Badger. I know you said only to use your cell phone number for emergencies, but I'm trying to put together a playlist for my next show. Do you have any song suggestions for the prompt songs for the mailroom? Speaking of the mailroom, I heard you have some kind of painting of mailbox cubbies, and you're trying to, uh, send some important messages with it? <laughs> That's so cool. Can I, like, come and see it? Not that I know where you live or anything, but I could stop by and see it, and if there are any extra cubbies, maybe I could get my name on one. <laughs> that would be so cool and I could... Message recording limit exceeded. Next message. Hey, Anne. Me again. Um, I know it's the weekend and it's only Saturday afternoon, but I just want to make sure you're, you haven't, I don't, I don't know, gotten swallowed into that painting or anything. Call me back. Anne. Call. Us. Back. Hello? Hello. Oh, God, they recruited you? There's really no recruitment when your afterlife is inexplicably linked to the operator position of the stupid university that you died in. Uh, uh is, um, is B trying to call me? Who else? If I'd known they'd spend the entire weekend calling me nonstop, I never would have volunteered to take this stupid painting home with me. I don't know why you bothered. I mean, it's not going to work off campus. And Emily and Millie are too busy being miles ahead of you three to bother trying to steal it. What do you mean they're miles ahead of us? They're very close to getting through. How? We've completely overwhelmed them. Well, we've overwhelmed Emily. As for Millie, I haven't even seen her this semester. Whatever they're doing, they're not doing it alone. While they've had some help on this end, I would wager the majority of their progress seems to be coming from the other side. It's impossible. Who could be helping them? I mean, Katya is clearly fucking around over in our camp, not theirs, and it's not... Oh. Yes? Is there a reason I haven't been able to get a hold of XC? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Great. Does that make Horatio Ophelia in this scenario, since he keeps scuba diving down in the passageways? Do you want to talk to Beatrice or not? No. Great. I'll put her through. <sighs> and then bring that painting back to campus and just fucking get this over with already. I'm tired of writing Poldark fanfiction all day. I thought that B... Thought that B what? I thought you were posting fiction for Dean Bowles and other fandoms. Oh, that. Yeah, I tried, but after a week they all shift back into the Poldark fandom. Uh... Yeah, pissed people off. They were like, what the fuck is this very long Nancy Drew fanfic doing in the Poldark section? Etc, etc. Wait, the Nancy Drew adaptation is still floating around out there? Figured why not. Okay, sure. So, what's up? She says, like someone who hasn't been avoiding phone calls all weekend. I haven't been avoiding them. I've been scoring portfolios for the Associate Degree Bridge Program. Oh, those take forever. Yes. And in regards to the painting, there's genuinely been nothing to report. Well, where are you now? I thought you were going to bring the painting back. I did. Uh, I'm standing up here in my office. My office! And, shockingly, I do not see the painting. That's because I'm in my office.
What? Ew. Why? Langdon Dredd suggested we go back to the beginning, didn't he? My office is the beginning. I mean, wouldn't the art room be more of the beginning than your office, technically? No. Everything going on with Exy happened without our knowledge at all, so for us, the mouth of the volcano equals my office. <laughs> Does that mean your office is now warmer than it was? No. I was making a Jules Verne reference. <sighs> Shitty reference. Ooh, what was the reference? Duh! Why, why are you here? I figured out from Bee's babbling where you were. How's the painting? Same. Oh. Um, how are you? Same. That's not a real answer. Okay, I'm hanging up and coming down too. Okay. Bye. Oh, this place looks kind of desiccated. I know. I feel like I should be wearing an air filter, but Horatio claims it's fine, and Perry Caldwell couldn't find any signs that the glitter spore things were actually dangerous, so... Do we trust Perry, though? I mean, why not, I guess. Is she still doing her experiments? Um, I mean, the power's gone off twice already since I've been down here, and each time a threatening text to Griswold Fox put it right again, so... Great. Okay, never fear, I'm here. And I come bearing mail. My mail? Mm, yep. Why? I was going to hold it hostage until you came back with the painting. What did you think I was going to do, run away with it? It's a painting of mailbox cubbies. It's a great painting of mailbox cubbies. I didn't say anything against its quality, just that, you know, it's a painting of mailbox cubbies. By Langdon Dread. I'm not going to sell it to MoMA. <laughs> <laughs> did you grab my mail too? <laughs> no. Oh, so you'll get mail for the person holding our painting hostage, but not for your very best friend. Ew. I was not holding the painting hostage. Nothing was happening with it. And frankly, we have been spending a lot of time together. I just wanted a weekend where I could sit at home and rage score underwhelming portfolios. They were that bad? No, they were actually pretty good. Another attempt at ruining my fucking day. <sighs> Do you ever think that maybe the magic of teaching has died for us? Yes. Well, thank goodness the most recent edition of this small university quarterly has come in. Perhaps it will hold the answers to our plight. Stop going through my mail. Too late. Oh la la, an article about incorporating technology into the classroom. Um, is that issue from, like, 1995? No, they're going on about teaching via Zoom. Still? Forever and ever and ever and... Oh, holy fucking fuck. What? What? Look at this. Oh, um... Oh, wow. What is it? <clears throat> Reaching the Rest. How the brainchild of a Briar University dean began a program helping students to embrace all levels of learning. What? You've got to be kidding me. Hmm, keep fucking reading. Um, blah, blah, oh, okay. Uh, Emily Kant, Dean of Humanities at Briar University, began the Academic Asaurus Project back in 2018 with very little support or enthusiasm. But thanks to the pandemic, the journal has taken off, becoming a program drawing scholars from all facets of the humanities with a unique focus on academic accessibility. <laughs> no, no fucking way. Uh, the Academic Source program features new articles and presentations from scholars that make learning engaging and fun, and each new lecture has drawn greater crowds than the one previous. Uh, uh, please stop reading. Nope, there's more. Dean Kant, who spearheaded the project shortly after gaining her position, says the road wasn't always easy. Quote, At first, the journal gained very little notice or traction, but I knew I had something special. I'm actually throwing up in my mouth. Not me! Ew! Okay, I'm not actually doing that, but I want to. Still, you. There are so many suspiciously singular first-person pronouns in this interview. <clears throat> Quote, I kept pushing, looking for new ways to reach our students and bring them into the joys of academia. As it turns out, our unique kind of Jormungandr engagement required more of a push. Print wasn't enough. We needed these presentations from the great accessible minds of our time. This is so much bullshit. So much bullshit. I can't even. Does anyone have a bag I can breathe into? Get a hold of yourself. Me? You've shredded the rest of Anne's mail with your fingernails. Yeah, I know. Only one of us can rage out at a time, and I'm deeply in the throes. 
Dean Kant has become a figure of deep interest in the small university community and is slated to give presentations of her own to her colleagues on how her inspired vision for the journal has led to such academic success. Okay, I'm not reading any more of this. I can't. I'm just, uh, oh, wow. I guess that answers the question of why we were getting nowhere with the academic source stuff. She stole all of it. All the credit, all the clout, all the... Ugh, everything. Everything. And we just handed it to her. I, how could we have known she'd do this? This is academia. All people do is steal. We should have known she'd take credit for everything. God, if this actually had anything to do with my career, I'd be so devastated. No, at least it's just our lives. Right. So instead, I'm pissed. Whoa. Whoa. What? what? The fuck was that? I felt that in my shoes. I think the whole foundation just shifted. Oh, for fuck's sake. Please tell me this is something Perry Caldwell is doing. I don't... Uh, oh good, I'm getting a call from Griswold Fox. Well, fuck. Answer it. Let's hear about our doom. Uh... Hey, Gris, you're on speakerphone. Hey, this is a preemptive and slightly freaked out phone call, just to say not it. If it's not you, how did you know the power's out over here? I actually didn't, but thanks for verifying. <laughs> what? The power seems to be out all over campus. Perry was fielding some pissed off calls. What the fuck? I don't suppose you guys are up to something? What could we possibly be doing that would drain the entire campus of its power? That's kind of why I was freaked out. We're not it either. Uh, great. I think I might even be more freaked out than I was already at like a level five. Before the power going out? Why? Well, you know how we're trying to make a 3D rendering of the school for use with the VR headset? I feel like they just make up something new every time. What about it? Well, just before the power went out, we had a glitch. The rendering started to, I don't know how to describe it, except to say it started altering itself. What? How? A new hallway somehow managed to build itself leading off from Melissa Vicker's office. What? No way. Yeah, it was super weird because I definitely didn't program anything that would allow the modeling software to- Thanks, Chris. We gotta go. Uh, okay, but what should I tell- Fuck. Fuck. They're in. We don't know that for sure. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> now is not the time to be naive idiots. Millicent Bicker and Emily Kant have opened up a passageway into the mirror school thanks to our stupidity. Look, while I'm all for blaming ourselves for everything, I talked to your friend, Dean Bowles, on the phone. She said there's been help from the other side, too. Uh, who? Exie? I don't know. I haven't been able to contact her, but I don't think it's Katya. No shit, it's not me. Ah, Fuck! Wow, Stark. Who's your the lights? Katya? Where the fuck are you? Well, I'm not lurking in the darkest corner of the room, if that's what you're afraid of. I'm behind here. Behind where? Oh my god, the fact you three got this far without falling into a ditch and dying or something is truly astonishing. The painting, you nitwits! I'm on the other side of the cubby holes. Oh, yeah. Oh, duh. Ugh. The fact that you three compared yourselves to Nancy, George, and Beth is an affront to Carolyn Keene. Did you read Bee's fanfic? I did. It was... inspired. Mm, thanks. Too bad it's been shoved back over to Poldarkland. LOL. Yeah. About that? Mm, what? Have you checked the view count lately? No. Why bother? Are you checking? I'm checking. Do I just, like, look under Poldark? I think... Oh. What? <laughs> wow. Told you. What? It has over 4,000 hits. What? And a bunch of comments. Give me that. How did 4,000 people find the fic? And in the wrong place? Well, from what I saw before, my phone was stolen from me. Apparently, some people in the Poldark fanfiction world were complaining about it, and non-Poldarkers got wind of it and decided to come check it out. What do the other comments say? Do they like it? Uh, lots of variations on I have no idea why I'm here or how I got here, but who knew a fic about Nancy Drew's supernatural academic life would be the best thing in the Poldark fandom? Hmm, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bad for Poldark. Oh shit, they all want an ending. Wait, you didn't finish the fic? Of course I didn't finish the fic. 
He wrote 80,000 words, and there's no ending? No. The weird corner of the internet that found your insane story is pissed. Myself included. We need that ending. Are you going to help us get that ending? Hey, you built your tunnel yourself. How did you think I got back here in the first place? I've been stuck in the same rooms down here for months, and then along comes a tunnel. Not the only tunnel, apparently. No. So hurry the fuck up and get down here. I, I can't see you. How do we get in? It's... Oh. And put your cell phone on flashlight mode. This. Look. The lock is gone. The one that was on the side. <laughs> well, fiddle dee dee. It sure is. So come on down, friends. Not gonna lie, I'm not thrilled that we still can't see you. You'll see me soon enough. Now. Are you coming or not? Like that was even a question? Okay, gang. All for one. No. no. Oh, come on. I want to be like the Three Musketeers. I really don't think that novel is as happy as you think it is. It is if I say it is, and if I continue to refuse reading it or watching any adaptations. Wow. Are you coming or what? Okay, um, I guess I'll just tug? Oh, um, okay then. After you. Of course. Anne? Right here. Oh, it's wet. I should have worn better shoes. You always say that. Keep going, I can't get in. Oh, and sorry, is that- Oh, shit. Fuck, 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 it's stuck. I can't get it back open. Can I get your flashlight? Um, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh. <gasps> Academicosaurus is a Haunted by Birds production in association with the Creeptopolis Creeps. For more information, you can visit us on our website at academicosaurus.wixsite.com slash home. You can also come talk to us on Twitter or Instagram, or you can send us an email at academicosaurus at gmail.com. Unless you're trying to send us promotional emails about how we can increase our monetary gains. I mean... <laughs> Did you miss the part where the podcast is ending? Or... Our performers for this episode are Marina Matlock as Ida Winters, Amanda Funk Hilton as B. West, Mary O'Reilly as Anne Dye, Michelle Medic as Edna Bowles slash The Operator, and Brian as Griswold Fox. We're still not telling you who Katya is. This episode was written and edited by Mary, and our theme music is Shake It by Jazar. The theme music for Badger Bites is Phone Call, also by Jazar. To find more of his work, visit betterwithmusic.com. Thank you for listening to Academicosaurus. If you enjoy our show, please subscribe or leave us a comment. We read them all. <laughs> if you would like to support our show, we have a Ko-Fi that allows us to suck down coffee at an unreasonable rate. To blame for this week's state of over-caffeination is Violet! Violet, you are our champion. Our light. Our shining star. Thank you for sticking with us. You are wonderful. We also really, really want to thank Anna. Anna, your donation came right after we finished recording. So unfortunately, you're stuck with just me, but we all really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And you are also absolutely groovy. We also would like to thank Maddie Parzival. Maddie! Maddie! <laughs> thank you for goofing around with us on Twitter. And thank you so much for your coffee support. All caps. And we'll absolutely invite Horatio. He is back next episode. Spoilers, etc. I don't think that's a spoiler. As opposed to if I were to say that next episode will have... Holy shit! Why would you even say that? See you in two weeks! So deep sound from within the school rumble. Sweet merciful. Cr